once again we're here to trust and believe God that he will give us a word uh, for us today, praying that everyone is in good spirit and doing well and all families are doing fine by the help of the Lord. Uh, it truly is a blessing to be able to be here today and we just thank God for this another day that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. But truly God is a good God not just good some of the time, but God is good all of the time. We'd like to say to us today that because we're going through uh, this time that we never experienced before, know that God is still God and He's still in control. Whatever God is allowing to happen at this particular time, God knows what He's doing. I've said before and I say again, Maybe this is the wake-up call for all of us as a people of God to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, like never before, like never before. We're just good to be here today. I want to, before we get into our lesson today, I want to give God praise and thanks for a couple of our graduates that we had uh, from Grace Apostolic Assembly. First of all, I want to thank God for uh, Sister Kayla Boyce Amen. And her graduation, amen, as she uh, furthered her uh, academic achievements. Uh, we thank God for her, and we also thank the Lord today for Sister Lisa Funches. Thanking God for her, amen. Bless God for these young ladies, and we pray that they will be the example uh, that some of our other young people need to realize that it's never too late. Uh, to further your education. Amen. Yes, we're going to be saved, we're going to trust God, but we also need an education. So take those two ladies for an example and move forward. Say, God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll come in once again, Lord God, as humble as we've been taught to come. And we come with praise and we come with thanksgiving. We come, Lord God, asking you now to smile upon those that's uh, mourning the loss of their loved ones today, Lord Jesus, and all of the violence that's taking place in our city and across the country. Uh, young lives are being lost uselessly, Lord God, but we know that you are able, Father God, and I can say that experientially, Lord Jesus, because you brought us through a time uh, of mourning when we lost our son and not just us Lord Jesus but many many others that we do not know we actually continue to smile upon them oh God and pray for uh, the sick and the afflicted everywhere oh God and this uh, pandemic is not over by a long shot but we know that you are able Lord God I say again whatever take place you are in control you are in charge, and we're learning how to lean and depend upon you, Lord Jesus. Ask the Father continue to smile upon my home and my family. Remember your preachers, leaders, and teachers everywhere, O oh God. Continue to bless us with a word that we may be able to bless your people, O oh God. Now, Father, once again, take this word and encourage the hearts and the minds of men, women, boys, and girls everywhere. We may have a greater desire to be more like you. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Today we want to uh, talk from the subject, the hurting, the dying, and the loss. The hurting, the dying, and the loss. And we would like to use for... Our main scripture lesson today would be from the book of Hebrews, chapter number 6, and we would like to read verses 1 down through verse number 6. That is Hebrews chapter number 6, verse 1 through verse number 6. And we hear the word of the Lord saying, Therefore, leaving the principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance 
from dead works and of faith toward God, of doctrine, of baptism, of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do, if God permit. Verse number four, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and was made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. Verse number six says, If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open chain. The hurting, the dying, and the lost. As we look at this lesson, we see the, the realness of the text. Uh, it's my concern to get you, get us, I should say, to understand the times that we are now living in. We have to understand the times that we're living in. Uh, and bringing out the hidden darkness, the plagues of the mind. One of the things when you take a long look at where you are and think about where you should be in the Lord. I'm mindful that of oftentimes of where I am now and where I should be in the Lord. Life with all of its ups and downs, yes, and there are many, points to the failures of the past. Yes, the failures of the past and give you a very dim view of tomorrow. What are you saying, Pastor? If we look back and reflect upon the, all of the bad times stated before the things of the past, then it gives us a dim view of the future. The devil wants you to think that things are not going to get any better. Each day, the devil wants you to think it's going to get worse and worse, but not so. i got good news for you today if you listen. The devil wants you to think that things will get worse as time go on. But I heard a writer say there is a better day ahead. Sometimes we have to go through something to get where we're trying to go. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil duke you. Amen. And with no one to share your problems with. That's what the devil wants you to think. I'm going through, but there's no one to share with. There's no one to share my hurts. No one to tell that I'm dying down on the inside. That I feel lost without a guide. But I want you to know that there is always hope. Always hope. The Bible shares with us, Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. John 10 and 10 says to us, The devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. First, he wants to steal you away, get you off by yourself. And then he'll kill you and destroy you. But I like the latter part of that where Jesus said, But I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. I want you to trust in that today. Don't be afraid. Know you're saved and trust God. Or hear the writer saying in 2 Timothy 1 and verse number 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
for the power of love and a sound mind. I want to say that again because I want you to realize that today God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Our lesson today led us to know that this was a problem with the saints of Paul's day. Uh huh. Amen. They had a fear of trusting in the Lord. That's why there were so many questions raised. And taking God at His word. And that's what I want you to do today is take the Lord at His word. If God said it, Buy into it. Believe it. Hold on to it. Take God at His word. I feel that we have the same problem that they had in our day. Not trusting God. Not believing God. We want to put a time limit on God. I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. No, keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Because I heard a songwriter say, he may not come when you call him, but he's always on time. Always on time. Hallelujah. So we see then the Hebrew believers was challenged to do what they had been avoiding to do. And we're challenged today. This time now, we're challenged to do what we have been taught to do down through the years, and that is to believe in God. Lend yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Him use you in a way that He desires. The avoiding that. That is to leave Christian Logan, meaning the word of the beginning of the Messiah. We have to hold on to the God's word has not changed, saints of God. What we see here is the first principle of God. The first principle of God. And God's self-revelation, which is mentioned in Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter number 5, verses 12 through 14. And we hear the word of the Lord saying, For when the time you ought to be teachers... Uh, when you ought to be teachers, the writer is saying, you have need that one teach you again. What is he saying? You've been saved a while now. You've been in the Bible studies. You've been in the Sunday school. You've heard the messages. You should be teaching someone how to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But he said you have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God. The first principle of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk. One that have need of milk. What is he saying? And not strong meat. Need of milk. A babe. Reminded of my grandchildren, amen. I have two grandbabies now that's on milk. They're not ready for strong meat yet. They're not ready to tell somebody else what strong meat is like because they're not yet there yet. And so it is with so many that's been saved for a long time. They still have need of milk. For everyone, notice this now, he said, everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the words of righteousness. Unskillful. For he is a babe. That's what the writer is saying to us. Let me try to help us. The writer is saying to us they need milk. Milk is the basic principles of the gospel message. When we first get saved, God doesn't give us the strong stuff, the deep stuff. Milk, the first principles of the doctrine. The message explained to them because they had not fully 
grasp these principles. That's why I tell the saints all the time when you're in Bible class and in Sunday school or the morning worship, don't just sit there idle. Pay attention. Download everything you can because the day is going to come when you're going to have to upload, bring back, pull up those things that you've heard down through the years. Thank God I'm still feasting now on words of wisdom that I heard from my pastors back 50 some years ago when I first got saved. Still feasting on that word. And guess what? The word still works. Mm -hmm. You have to bring that word back. They were unable to comprehend deeper truths of the word of God. So then the word unskillful, one of the rendition means untested. Untested. This say the Hebrews were not able to teach because they did not have enough experience in the word of God. Were not able to teach because they didn't have enough experience. And oftentimes, I think many a times the Bible talks about not putting a novice in certain positions. There are so many now that uh, went to the Bible schools or whatever, and have their degrees, and they're trying to teach from a book standpoint. And that's all good, but at the same time, you must teach experientially. That's why the scripture said, by precepts, and examples. Mm -hmm. Unskillful in the word. Unskillful. Amen. So it is like that now in our day and time. It's like night and day. Milk and meat. So note the text. He goes on to say, But strong meat belong to them that are full age. Those that's maturing in ah, the Word of God. Those that's learning how to exercise themselves in the Word of God. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And this knowledge comes through experience and through revelatory knowledge as God has opened up his, the mind of the believers. I believe what the writer is trying to say, amen, to get us to do or get them to do is move beyond the elementary understanding. A person get into high school and did not have the same mentality they had when they was in grade school. Because we're moving on, and so it is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Moving from the elementary understanding of the difference between Judaism and Christian messianic teaching. That's what the Paul and the rest of them was trying to get them to move on now. It's time to move. The challenge was to go on to deep, mature understanding of the implications of their confession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I believe that there are many today that's a shame to own up that they know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. But did not you hear the word of the Lord say, if you're ashamed to own me before men, that he would be ashamed to own us before the Father. I want everyone to know that I love God, that I'm a called out one, and I will stand every chance I get and tell somebody about so great salvation. Hallelujah. So we find here, let me pause here to let us know that Jesus is the only source of relief that we have in the world. The only source. Amen. He's the only source of relief for, uh, that we have in this hurting, dying, and lost world. 
There are many hurting men, women, boys, and girls of all ages that allow the world's system to suck all of life's giving system out of them. And the only reward is failing in your spirit and getting weak and falling away from the coming world of God. Falling away and being separated from God. Yes, the order of the day is this. Let us go on to perfection. I say that often time. Let's go on to perfection. Every day when I experience God, it whets my appetite and makes me want to know what the next day is going to bring. I want to be more like Him every day, every day. Yes, you're dying and hurting. Amen. Lost world. There are many hurting men, women, boys, and girls, like Ford stated. Amen. But we have to move forward in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have our marching orders. Move on to perfection, to a deeper level in Christ. But you're hurting, dying, and lost. Hurting, dying, and lost. When you walk outside of the divine will of God, I want to say that again. I said you're hurting, dying, and lost when you walk outside of the will of God. God have a plan for all of our lives, saints. All of our lives. So let's turn to the Lord while He may be found. Yes. Walking outside the divine will of God, amen, you will find that you find yourself separated from the Lord. You must arise to the level where you know the difference between the called out ones and the religious community. A lot of people are very, very religious about many things, mm -hmm. but they're far from salvation. There is a difference. There is a difference. The word of the Lord said, Come out from among them. Be separated and be saved. Come out. Be separated and be saved. The Lord just dropped in my spirit. Now we're talking about social distancing. We should do the same thing when it comes to our spiritual man. There should be social distancing between the saved and the unsaved. Hallelujah. Come out. Listen, if you're hurting and you do not need to be with hurting folks. If you're hurting, you don't need to be with hurting people. Dead folks can't help you if you are dying. Lost people can't help you find your way. That's why it's so important to move on to the next level. There are great depths of truth to be discovered as we read and study and pray and ask God for understanding. So move on. Don't again lay the foundations. Truth, never forget them. Never forget the foundations, but we must move on because our hope is built on repentance from dead work. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. It's what it's built on. The doctrine of baptism, the laying off of hands, and the resurrection from the dead. Yes, we preach and we teach that and we are built on that. And eternal judgment, this we will do if God permit. But we must move on. We laid the foundation. Now let's build thereon. Let's build thereon. Now it's time to move on in the Lord. 
some folks by their actions say they don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. I've been baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm satisfied. No, 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 no. We can't become satisfied. Amen. They act like they don't want to grow because they are still where they were 10 years, 5 years, a year ago. I don't even want to be where I was yesterday. I want to grow in the Lord. That's the reason they're hurting. Because there is something in them that want to be set free. If you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost want to be set free, that need to grow, something in you that need to grow, and that need to tell others about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't it just excite you when you get a chance to tell somebody where you was and where God has brought you from? They have gone full term, many of them, but still won't be delivered. Won't be delivered. I heard a word saying, let's turn to uh, 2 Kings chapter number 19. We're almost done. 2 Kings chapter number 19, and we notice here verses 1 down through verse number 3. And it says to us, and it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders and the priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is the day of trouble, and of rebuke, and blasphemy, for the children are come to birth. Get this now. The children are come to birth and there's no strength to bring forth. To me, that set an indictment against the church in this hurting, dying, and lost world that people are wanting to be saved and they come to the house of God and there's not enough strength there to help them be delivered. Hurting, dying, and the loss. The spirit of doubt, the spirit of unbelief will keep you in bondage. We have you, we'll have you afraid to trust God, but if you are hurting enough and you feel like you're dying long enough, feel like you're lost, you'll come to Jesus. Let me help you before I close today. The Lord is the same today as He was then. Mm -hmm. If you're hurting, come to Jesus. If you feel like you're dying, come to Jesus. If you feel lost, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. But you can only have that testimony after you know God or have been known by Him. And He has put His Spirit within you. 2 Timothy 1 and 6 let us to know wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you. It's time, saints of God. I preached a message one time, preach it again one of these days. Shake it up, it's still good. Mm -hmm. Shake it up, it's still good. I know you're hurting, dying, and you feel lost. I know that. And the devil is telling you that you can't make it. I want to refute that. You can. You can. You can make it in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must tell that devil with God on my side, all things are 
possible. The word of God declare I, I can do all things. The word of God say I can do all things to him. Hallelujah. Because I am found, I'm not lost. I don't know, maybe you feel lost. But you must come to spiritual maturity. I may be hurting, but I'm not dead. Because God said live. Because he said live, I shall live. And I'm not lost. I say again in my closing today, because I'm found in the Lord Jesus Christ. What is your choice? Will you keep on hurting? Will you die? Will you be lost? Or will you come to Jesus and go on to perfection? The hurting, the dying, and the loss. Let me share this with you before I go. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Repent. Turn from everything that you know isn't like God. Turn. Walk away from sin. And take on water baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission or the removal of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give unto us. I don't know about this Holy Ghost people get now. They say they got the Holy Ghost, but they never spoke in tongues. Well, I'm going to go with what the Bible says. You shall receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give us. Then walk circumspectly to the Word of God. Yield yourself. Hallelujah. You heard him, yes, but yield yourself. Dine on the inside. Yield yourself. Feel lost. Yield yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. The hurting, the dying, and the loss. Say, God bless you. And may God ever keep you in the center of his perfect will. Saints of God, stay encouraged. Stay encouraged like never before. We may never get back to what was the norm, but we're going to excel. We're going to excel. We're going to go higher. We're going to go places in God we've never been before. But it's going to take all of us working in concert together. Mm -hmm. The hurting, the dying, and the loss. We love you in the Lord today. Say so God bless you.